Night vision is so 2013. 2014 is all about thermal, thanks to Darren Rogers, better known as the Prince of Darkness on our air gunning programme Airheads, bringing along his guide thermal unit, we're producing some quite terrible images. Here are some unflattering shots of our foxes tonight, starting with Roy Umper Lumper Lupton, Gary, the little known seventh member of Village People, and David looking like a Roy Orbison tribute act from Beyond the Grave. Needless to say, Darren remains the other side of the thermal for this picture. As well as a superb spotting tool, thermal also shows Roy's glow. Now, we know he has a natural aura anyway, but today it is supercharged thanks to a thermal waistcoat he's been sent to test. It doesn't need a bigger one. This is perfect. It's meant to be snug. It's a snug fit and we'll see how it performs later on. Let's crack on with those foxes. After the other day when we came in here and we squeaked the fox in, but unfortunately David was having trouble and he was doing his best Mr Magoo impression and couldn't see the fox in front of his face. The big thing with the big pointy ears and the long nose is foxy, yes, in front of you. We have a customer in the distance, but he isn't budging. Roy uses mouth calls and the Western River too. The thermal picks up the deer in the distance and a few rabbits, but nothing fox-like appears. Our next field offers Darren a great chance. He's using night vision tonight and the Nightmaster IR Illuminator draws in the fox like a tractor beam. It's a done deal. I think David should have got that one on camera, hopefully. So uh, it was quite a large fox, he shouldn't have been able to miss it. Uh, we'll see if we get any more. You are getting some abuse tonight, aren't you? Sorry, mate. Sorry, I hope I don't miss. That's not nice, is it? Why would you say something like that? That really is quite cruel, isn't it? Come on, let's go get one. It's a beautiful evening with a clear sky. We're finding foxes. This next one is a little shrewder. Giving us a bit of a run around, Roy has to get above it. in the process of coming up we spooked it and it went down into the thicket there and was obviously making its way through the bracken. Ah. We squeaked a little bit more and just got it to look back, put the lamp on it again, it disappeared and silver, we just held it? the lamp above it so I could get the scope somewhere near it and that just as Darren pulled the light down onto it, it just allowed me enough time to get a shot. So, second one in. Tonight Roy is using the Australian made Max Box Magnetic Rifle Rest from Pro Duck and Goose Hunting Supplies. It was actually meant for Mr Crow, but as he's been giving the budgie smugglers an airing in some hot climate, he hasn't been around to stop Lupton nicking the swag bags he has blagged. Ditched the bipod just to give this a go, and so far I'm very impressed with it. It holds the rifle really nicely, and it's very easy just to swing about. It gives you a real steady, almost bench rest form of shooting, so for long range shots, I would have thought that's going to be really good. It's also got magnets in it, which obviously for the, uh, the top of the gator, because we've got a wooden top, it's not going to do an awful lot tonight. But if you were shooting over the top of a pickup or whatever else, then it would be superb. But so far, I'm impressed with it, and I will be until I miss one from it. The fox is a large dog fox with impressive canines. Oh, he's got some gnashes on him, isn't he? Look at the size of him. After admiring the dentistry, Darren's back in the chair. Roy's calling works again, and again we have to manoeuvre to get ourselves in a position with a suitable backstop. We've got a full moon tonight, so it's not the ideal conditions. We are literally lit up like pimping on the backside. But he ran down to the hedgerow here, and as we've come down, he was crossing back in to come back into the thicker cover in here, and stopped perfectly right in the middle. So we were offering a fantastic opportunity. We just pulled the gator up, Darren got on him, squeezed the shot, and we're number three in for the evening. 
This time it's a vixen. Now, as we're heading toward midnight, the temperature is falling, but someone on the gator is feeling warm and smug. Sorry, snug. So you've got three different heat levels. So I'm not that cold yet, so I'll leave it on a medium. I'll give it, on a, I'll, I'll warm up on a nice two there and see what that does. How long does it take to actually cook a lupton? To cook a lupton? I don't know. <laughs> what is it normally about 15 to 18 minutes per pound for rare? We could be here for a long time. <laughs> we'll see how he's looking with the thermal camera in a bit. Back to the foxes and Roy's in the saddle. To give his mouth a rest, the Western River's call is blaring out the familiar tunes. Roy has uploaded some of his own calls which have been successful. So we've got one on the harmonica type from Best Fox Call and we've got another one on the uh, Silver Fox. And what we've done is uh, downloaded those as MP3s. David sent them over to me and we've put them on the, the uh, caller there and it does work quite well. So uh, towards this end of the night when your lips are feeling a bit puckered out, you can just sit back and play it on the machine and you've got exactly the same effect as if you were mouth calling yourself. He's really having to coax those foxes out tonight, but eventually he manages to get one in a shootable position. Look at the size of you, son. So four in the bag, and as Darren says, we've had worse, especially given the entourage. What do you think two cameramen, two rifles, someone driving, <laughs> what? moonlit night, moonlit no night. I think we're doing quite well, we've four. <laughs> Got some daggers on him. This last dog fox is the biggest of the night. All that remains is to show just how toasty Roy's been with his new waistcoat and to make some funny faces, some intentional, some natural.